four. Not bad. If you had to single out one machine and say that it formed the 20th century, it would have to be the internal combustion engine. Five. Coming on. And a manifestation of the, of the internal combustion engine really did genuinely give power to the people. It's small, light. I believe I have one with me. There it is, the two-stroke engine. Two strokes, that is, as opposed to the four strokes that any self-respecting engine would have. That's what gives it its distinctive and, to my mind, horrible sound. This engine didn't so much turn the world as totally infest it. And personally, I hate the buggers. One. Just enough. Unfortunately, there are plenty of other folk who just love the two-stroke engine to bits. In fact, I wish they would. Very little bit. Oh. simple inventions, the genius of the two-stroke is its very inception. At a stroke, or rather two, it allows you to throw out three-quarters of the moving parts of a four-stroke engine. When the piston goes up to fire, the vacuum inside here is used to draw fuel and air mixture through the carburetor here. And when it comes back down, it's now compressing all the air in here. And that pressure is used to push the fuel up and onto the top of the piston. So the piston comes up and fires again, and it just goes on and on and on. The simplicity of the two-stroke engine is much appreciated around these parts. In fact, here is where it can be said to have brought power to the people. In the dark days following World War II, the German economy was in a shambles, and money, especially here behind the Iron Curtain, was tight. There was a desperate need to get industry kick-started, to rebuild and to get people moving, and in the East, they turn to the two-stroke. Slight sense of excitement and wonderment today because we're here at the shrine of the two-stroke, the Holy of Holies. A car that has driven millions from A to B at very low cost and been the butt of every lousy comedian's terrible jokes for some years. Ladies and gentlemen, I offer you the Trabant. And we're in the, why don't you keep your big mouth shut department here? Because like a fool, I said, I could take the engine out of that. And uh, the director, or the Führer as we call him here, said, well, why don't you, big boy? So, a piece of rubber, as we call it in the trade. Right. Go. We'll have that off, I think. I think this was tightened up by the biggest man in East Germany. Good Lord. Well, that's a lump in it. Six volts, you know, six volts. In Britain, they have a completely different bolt size and everything to do with batteries. You have to have a complete set of spanners just for undoing batteries. Scheiser. Listen, don't knock the Trabi. It's reliable, efficient, and costs about a third as much as your car to run. The entire car can be dismantled with five spanners. Maybe you're the sporting type or a chrome head. Every model comes completely fitted with an interior. There you go. Right, now, bish bosh, bish bosh. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> that should be just about it, you know. Eins, 
satisfied, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm back out. Come on. Oh, Jesus, look at that. That's wonderful. <laughs> God, man's ingenuity knows no bounds. Fantastic. There's your cylinders, you see? Two individual cylinders. Two individual manky cylinders. Fantastic. I wonder if people steal these engines. They're so easy to get out. I wonder if there's all kinds of teenage boys going around Leipzig with four spanners and <laughs> very dirty hands. Right then, I think it's about tea break time, boys, is it not? The new Germany seems to be trying to bury the old Trabi along with its recent past, and I think that's a shame. I mean, how many cars can you name that can do 60 miles to the gallon, need servicing once every two years, and have an engine that can be removed by any 20-stone artiste in less than 23 minutes? Of course, if you happen to be a macho speed freak, the Trabant may not be the car for you. No siree, Bob. In the macho speed freak department, the two-stroke engine features in a very different machine developed in East Germany. What's more, is the subject of a classic tale of Cold War espionage, intrigue and betrayal. The machine in question was developed in the 1950s and built here at the MZ factory in Schopau. You've got to hand it to the Germans. When it comes to efficiency allied to inventiveness, the history of engineering is littered with them. One such was MZ's chief engineer, Walter Carden. He spent 10 years footering with the two-stroke engine and turned it from a lawnmower into the fastest motorbike in the world. His ingenious device, the harmonic expansion chamber, allowed much of the exhaust fumes to be ejected from the cylinder before the fresh air in the fuel mixture is pumped in. Ipso facto, more mixture, more power. In the early 60s, Walter Carden's MZs were cleaning up on the European Grand Prix circuit, and the opposition seemed unable to come up with anything to match the flying machines. It was Suzuki who finally solved the problem. They borrowed it. In a pre-arranged deal with the Japanese, Ernst Degner, the MZ's premier rider at the time, mysteriously disappeared halfway through the 1961 Swedish Grand Prix. In fact, Degner had established enough of a lead to be completely out of sight on the far side of the track, where he simply drove off a slip road and into the welcoming arms of the Suzuki rep. Ernst had also had the forethought to stuff his racing jacket with a complete set of the MZ's engineering specifications. Alan Shepard was there that day riding for the MZ team. He can still remember what a body blow Degner's defection was for MZ, and for his friend, Walter Carden, in particular. Had Ernst Stegner finished in the 125 race in the Swedish Grand Prix at Kristianstad, Walter would have got a first place in the Motorcycle Road Race World Championship. That man was dedicated, and he was an absolute genius. Although fundamentally, they've never improved on Carden's original designs, Japanese motorbikes have ruled the world ever since and the Swedish Grand Prix signaled the beginning of the end for the German, American and British bike industries as they all collapsed in the face of advancing Japanese technology. BSA did manage one very successful machine during this period, the beautiful little Bantam, so favoured by the postman of Britain, as I recall. BSA sold 400,000 of them, all equipped with a Walter Carden MZ engine. Meanwhile, back in East Germany, my spies told me there were still a few bikes from the original MZ factory to be found. My information led me to the back streets of Chemnitz. Oh, yes. Oh, please. Oh, that's lovely. It's a DKW uh -huh. from 1927. 27? 27. Oh, God. It's the gearbox is from England. Oh, really? What's the gearbox of? Yes. And we have many problems with British yeah. gearboxes. Oh, oh, I, I apologise on behalf of everybody in Britain. Were well, two strokes quite common in the 20s then? I thought they were quite rare, the two strokes, you know. Two strokes, yes. Yeah. A bit of a language problem here. He was obviously stalling. When I pressed him further, he reluctantly led me through the workshops and out the back. Tension is small, very. Yeah. 
<laughs> Is this some initiation ceremony? Am I going to have yeah. to do a funny handshake? Yeah. <laughs> Down at the bottom of the garden. It's an old fire. Yeah. Of his here. Aha. Uh -huh. Shame they haven't any spares, eh? <laughs> Lordy. Lordy, Lordy, yeah. So, and here it's uh, uh -huh. our office. Oh, boy. And people think yes. I do this for the money. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Many money. <laughs> Are you sure you've got enough now? <laughs> Lordy. Yes, this is... This, this is the bike? Yes, yes, this bike. It's a new from Chemnitz, from Chopau. We can this bike, we can it... Yeah, let's go, let's do okay, it. OK, OK. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I must say I could okay. spend a day in here looking around. Well, you don't have to OK, you. OK. So. Handsome bike. This one's gorgeous as well. That's just. Awesome. I could move in, you know. <laughs> I just have my bed in the corner. <laughs> Sad, so. isn't it? <laughs> no! Uh, on the spring up. up Behind the bike shed, he hastily whispered the directions to the MZ factory and wished me what I interpreted as good luck. Even as I left, I knew we'd never meet again. Oh, there you go. Hey! A fantastic noise. Good boy. When I finally found the MZ factory, it was empty and derelict. Well, there you go. Poor old MZ went the same way as a lot of them in the 60s. Norton, Triumph, AJS, Velocet, BSA, Francis In the economic grimness of the post-war Eastern Bloc, the two-stroke engine brought cheap, efficient power to the people. But in the West, the emphasis was on pleasure. 